hi manish thank you so much for joining with us uh, so overall like uh, let me talk about myself my name is ankush thavri and i am the founder of learnomad technologies i have 10 plus years of experience with the technologies like uh, oracle db rag db then golden gate uh, big data technologies and the cloud and uh, so today we are going to conduct this uh, mock interview along with you uh, i hope you are uh, fine with uh, that we are going to upload this video on the social media platform and i think you, are, you should not any problem sure i'm sure that's fine i mean it will it will be useful for others to you know learn as as a learning perspective it will be really useful so thanks ankush thanks for uh, giving me this opportunity to have an interaction with you thank, thank you. you so um, before that um, can you just brief me uh, about yourself like uh, what's your roles and responsibility as a oracle db how many years of experience and uh, the things like that Uh, sure so i have been with the it industry for uh, close to 11 years now so into oracle dba my experience is around 10 years uh, i have worked with different organizations in the past so uh, uh, you know i start initially when i started my career it was like a junior dba when i was handling the incidents and the other the basic stuffs that a junior dba handles uh, gradually i moved on to the other organizations where the role uh, you know roles and responsibility increased so my last uh, project or the last organization that i was working it was uh, you know the role of an individual contributor where i was working with the customers dba team directly so we were primarily focusing on the database migrations upgrades uh, we were moving the customers uh, environments from uh, on premise to oci uh, also we were upgrading the customers database environments uh, into their their existing environment so uh, my experience with respect to technical uh, technical technologies it like uh, i have worked uh, end to end except golden gate so i have worked on different environments uh, hosted in on prem as well as hosted in uh, oci uh, xscs also i have uh, ex good exposure on the high availability technologies like uh, data guard rack and the other basic stuffs like you know i have uh, closely worked on mostly all the aspects of uh, dba uh, role has been diverse throughout so yeah that's pretty much about so you have 10 plus years of experience with this uh, multiple technologies including your rack data guard and uh, okay. 10 years you can say yeah so uh, how many clients you have handled till now uh, uh depends so for like i have changed like three or four organizations so like you can say uh, three or four clients um, ranging from different aspects like uh, some of their automobiles some of telecom some of them their healthcare some of them were public sector and all those things so yeah uh, i have different uh, industry experience with software okay. and uh, how many dbas were there in your last project uh, so uh, the last project that i was i was working uh, so we were like uh, three dbas from uh, my organization and three dbas were from the customer side so total six dbas were handling this uh, you know uh, the database environments they had close to 1000 databases including production non production so yeah that's the kind of setup we were working in and uh, 6db like how are you rotating yourself uh, in terms of shoots and all so i mean there was a concept of onshore and offshore so we were covering the the customer was based out of mexico so uh, they were covering mostly the you know uh, the american hours were covered by the customer team and the offshore hours were covered by uh, our india team so there was an overlap as well of uh, like uh, for any handover and everything so that's how we were managing later on we gradually the team uh, grew in size in india we hired two more people uh, two more junior dvs to manage the alerts and everything so that's how it was so your role like it was there as a lead or like an individual contributor you were doing that uh the last project was an individual contributor later i mean there were, it was a complete project of database migration initially it started with the upgrade and migration later on it went into the production support where we had to give the hyper care support to the customer for a few days like you know before a customer can handle their project on their own before letting the uh, project go from our organization to customer organization so uh, there was a hyper care period for like 3 uh, 4 months where we were giving support so yeah initially we started with the migration we helped them to migrate the databases from on premise to oci then there were a few upgrade challenges that we helped help them and then uh, we supported them for any you know application need and everything so uh, yeah so that's how it started started with the implementation then moved into uh, support role and then you know uh, hyper care support and then it was a wind up that's how it is so you were moving a data from your on premises to the oracle cloud right yes yes so like what are all things we need to take care before we move our data from 
on premises to and how are you done that what is the process that you followed uh, so primarily when we started like uh, the customer has different environments they have like uh, small databases uh, which were uh, which were in non production and then uh, there were uh, you know databases which were uh, larger in size so uh, the main consideration that we have to take care while doing the database migration is to like uh, what method you are going to use, you know, uh, the character set, the method that you are going to use, how much time it is uh, going to take, how much downtime you can afford during the migration. And then uh, what will be the, you know, what will be the effective way of doing a migration, like uh, how quickly you can hand over the environment to the customer once the database migration is done. So we initially, when we started, we tried a couple of methods like zero downtime migration. It worked in some cases. It yeah. Mm. yeah, so it worked in some cases. It is very useful in case of OCI. It worked in some cases, but uh, in few databases, there was challenges re related to the wallet and other security stuff. Then we tried export import. Uh, using export import, we migrated uh, you know uh, smaller databases uh, for the uh, you know bigger and the uh, larger databases we use data guard so how we did was the customer environment is like non cdb environment and in oci we were using the multi tenant so what we did was we took a copy of uh, you know uh, standby database into the oci and then during the day of the migration we converted that database into a snapshot standby and then on the target side we created a container database and then we uh, copied the you know the snapshot database we plugged that database as a pdb into the container database that strategy we used and it was quite effective to uh, do the migration okay and what about the golden gate any chances of using that uh, no no we have not used golden gate uh, and customer is also not using their application in their uh, their industry. how are you deciding this character set uh, see the char character set is decided on what uh, on the application so the customer is like uh, from a healthcare background so they have different applications so all the databases that they are using for different uh, you know different tools are on the different character set so whatever character set they are using in on premise we are using the same character we are creating the same cdb uh, same character set cdb in the oci mm -hmm. and just to avoid these issues because if the character set is different on the target side it will be uh, difficult to do the complete the migration so it depends on the customer current environment like on the source only we are deciding the character set uh, so can, can't we change the character set we can do that we can do that but that has a lot of other challenges i mean there are uh, nodes available there we can change the character set after migration also we can do that but if the database is already exist and i want to change the character set of the database is it possible uh yes we can do that database character there is a oracle node we i mean uh, during testing phase but i have worked with the client where, where they wanted to do that but uh, it has like uh, it has to go at the table level at the specific table level we have to do that so that's a quite uh, tedious exercise um, it's not easy to change the character set and many customer uh, tend to avoid this exercise we can do that there are nodes available for that okay and what is the like use of this uh, valid and all like why we are using that uh, valid is like uh, you know uh, we are using key uh, we have transparent data encryption concept is there in the Oracle so we want to encrypt the data address like uh, we have uh, table spaces should be encrypted all the database at the source data at the source should be encrypted so uh, wallet are basically used to store the key store passwords when, whenever you are uh, you want to encrypt the data at uh, your on-premise level or at, in the OC in OCI it is mandatory to have wallets so wallet is basically you know you create a key store you store the password there uh, for any kind of encryption that you want to implement. Or do we need to have an additional license for that or is it coming with the database itself? Uh, I'm not sure on that aspect. I need to check on that. And who takes care of this uh, licensing part uh, in the organization mostly? Uh, that is why taken care by the customer. Like customer, customer. is responsible for uh, you know purchasing the OCI, what kind of model they want to go for, like they want to go for uh, bring your own license or fixed cost model all the costing services everything is taken care of by the customer okay and uh so like is it a migration project now you are working like um, moving everything from the on-premises to the cloud platform so what is the like advantages like you might you might have observed like uh why the people are moving from on-premises to the cloud uh, the, the primary reason the customer wanted to move was like you know they have uh, this uh uh, they are running Exadata on their on-premise. So Exadata cost-wise, it is very high. 
you know, when you're running it on on premise, you have to take care of the storage. You have to take care of all the uh, infinity band switches. All those uh, stuffs are there. Uh, plus, you have the additional cost of the OS and everything. So basically, the infrastructure cost is quite large in the on premise, and there are additional services. Most of the resources which they are not using, they are going waste. You know, uh, some of the resources are underutilized. So when you go to the cloud, you pay only for the info, uh, only for the services that you are using. So the cost is reduced drastically. Cost is one aspect. Uh, plus cloud also has some you know some there are good offerings as well like uh, what i've seen in oci like they have manageability services they have observability services uh, which are taking a db management services also there like in on premise you just you are you are just using oem for monitoring and everything right so but in uh, you know in in on in cloud you have there are additional database services which are there which customer can utilize and they are available at a very nominal cost uh, so I think it comes down to the cost. The overall aspect is the cost. Like you want to reduce the cost overall. So that's the whole intention. Okay. And how many nodes you are using for rack or a data card, whatever you use? Uh, we are going with two node. Uh, I mean, the customer is also using two node in their on-prem. Is it also... with the data card or just a rack? Uh, with, uh, you know, in the data card also. In standby also, we are using two node. So it's primary two node and the standby two node. Yeah. So standby is also on the cloud side only? Yes, yes, we have uh, spread across two regions. Like uh, we have like Phoenix and Ashburn. So uh, we, we, you know, based on the customer's need, we are setting up the primary and standby on the uh, respective region. So if a region is having a primary in one side, like we are uh, setting up the standby on the other region to have the high availability. Okay. And how are you configuring this uh, data card setup in the OCA? Uh, in the, in OCI, like uh, the you know, uh, you have to first create a shell database in like if you want to set up a standby. So the standby, if I want to create a standby in India region. So in India region, I have to go, uh, log into the cloud console. I have to create a shell container database. So after the creation of the shell container database, I have to connect to the uh, you know there are two ways of doing it. You can do from the console and you can do manually also. But manual gives you a lot of control. So we have done it manually. Like uh, uh, we create the shell database from the console and then rest to the other thing, like setting up the parameters, uh, du duplication, and then enabling the data guard that we do from the console. I mean, from the command line. So that's how we have done it. But in the OC, it's quite easy, right? Like uh, it is asking, like, do you want to have a data guard for the just click there and it will create a data guard for you. Yeah. So the, the main challenge is like, if you want to do any DR drill, uh, switch over and fail over. So in that case, we observed some issues. We tried that method initially, mm -hmm. but like we have very less control over that. Uh, like uh, to have better control on it, we did most of the things manually. So, okay. Yeah. What's the difference between switch over and fail over? Uh, switch over is like, uh, you know, when you are doing a switch over, it's a planned activity. Like if you want to just swap the roles. You don't want to disrupt the That's kind of testing you're saying. Yeah, yeah. So you just uh, change the role. Your primary becomes a standby. Standby becomes a primary. And then you point applications. Uh, failover, I think we have used in uh, DR testing and also in failover, like we kind of replicate the uh, fail scenario, like disaster scenario. When we fail over a database to a standby, the standby will become a primary, but your primary will be like kind of discarded. It will be of no use. So you have to kind of reinstate it to uh, bring it up. Uh, you know. To, to a usable state. So yeah, that's the primary difference between switch over and failover. So do we need to rebuild that again? Just like we? Uh, the, you can do a rebuild also, or you can do a flashback also. What we have done is like, we have flashback to reinstate that. Uh, you know, you just note down the SCN number from the primary, uh, from the new primary, when it got, uh, when the role got changed. And then you, uh, I mean, uh, you then you flashback that uh, the failed database into the, uh, you know, bring it up as a, uh, bring it up, I mean, flash it back and then change the role to standby. That way we can do that. Okay. So you are uh, enabling the flashback on database level, right? Yeah, before DR, we have to do that, yeah. And uh, what about this, uh, like any challenges you want to talk about when you, uh, you know, working on the rack environment, what are all challenges that you faced? Um, rack, I mean, uh, th there are no specific uh, challenges with respect to OCI in rack, like it's quite stable. Uh, like few months back, we have faced some challenges related to the, uh, you know, uh, some of the, uh, you can say the memory, uh, you know, memory parameter. Because of the memory, the, uh, you know, one of the node was not, uh, one of the node in one of the database instance was not coming up. It kind of getting crashed immediately. So yeah, we raised a case with Oracle and then we had to increase the memory. Ultimately memory was the only solution we, we have to, but it was running on one node. So we did not have the complete outage. 
um, that's one thing that I remember recently that I have faced. Uh, apart from that, there is no other major challenge in RAC that I have faced as of now. I have not faced any, uh, you know, file corruption, cluster related issues and also not really, not very really much. So uh, like, uh, usually like we talked about the, um, the, like, you know, corruption kind of issues. Okay. So if you get any um, data file got corrupted, something on the primary side, how are you going to handle that in the data card environment? Uh, you know, uh, first is like, uh, if there is any corruption at the primary end, like we have to stop the replication first, you have to stop the sync first. That should be the first thing, like, because uh, if we come to know that there is a corruption in the primary side and, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, that should be the first step to stop the sync. Uh, first, we fix the corruption or recovery, perform the recovery on the primary side, and then enable the sync to uh, to make the data guard sync, uh, with, uh, sync with each other. That is my analogy on that. So that should be the first step. Like we should be stopping the sync, uh, do the, you know, if the data file is corrupted, just do the normal recovery. You have the Armin backup. You just have to bring down the database, bring down the data file as offline, mount it and restore from the latest backup. And then you start the recovery on these uh, primaries on this. Chances are there, like which will you know validate the um, whether any there is a uh, kind of corruption is there, which will validate and try to automatically fix that issue, something like that. Uh, I I know there is like you're talking about any physical corruption, like yeah, uh, physical any, corruption. Uh, okay. Uh, you can validate your databases to see if you have everything there in the in, in Armen. You can validate it mm. uh, at the database level. There are things I'm not recalling the. I mean, there okay. are the utilities available to check that. Not not recalling it. And uh, so, what's the difference between this? Uh, I want to talk about one more scenario. Like, uh, let's say I got some issues uh, in the data card environment. My both the primary and standby are not in sync. What are all things you will check in that? Um, the first thing is like, we have to check like, I mean, the alert log is the first thing. We need to check the alert log for the primary and standby both like, uh, and the second thing that we have to check is like, the our recovery process is running or not, MRP is up or not, uh, RFS should be also up. So RFS and MRP process are the key process for uh, sync. That should be checked first. And then we have to check the gap, like how much is the gap? like. On the primary side, uh, so what, what are the log sequence which is running and what is the log sequence which is running on the standby side? Um, identify like how much is the gap, how you can recover it. Like if the small gap, you can just uh, stop the MRP and recover it using the service name. That's one way. Or if the gap is huge, then you might have to copy the archives from the primary, restore it on the standby side, and then do, do, do a recovery. Um, it comes down to the basic background processes and the how much gap that you are having. Uh, so yeah, I mean, clear, first thing is alert log will give you the clear picture what's happening. Yeah. So if you know, like one or two archive logs are uh, missing on the standby side, what you'll do? Uh, we need to check. It depends. Like some uh, if the status of the uh, MRP is like wait for log. Sometimes the log is missing on the primary. That would be one case. Second thing is like uh, if the one or two archives are missing, you just have to wait for some time. Sometimes there is a network disconnect. They get sync automatically. Most of the time it happens. Uh, in, in case the archives are missing, then you have to restore it on the primary and then you stop the MRP and then you start the MRP, it automatically catches up. That also happens for one or two archives. So yeah. You can copy the archive logs from primary to just send it by using SCP to the standby and just register that, right? That is also possible. Yes, that is also possible. Yeah. So uh, the, is this a sequence to really matter in the archive logs in data card environment? Let's say I'm saying like, well, the sequence number one, two, three is okay, which is moving to the standby. Four, five is missing, but six, seven are okay again. So does that sequence number play an important role? Sometimes yes, sometimes no, because uh, uh, you know, in identifying like how how much you are missing in that time, it is useful. Like you can identify the sequence if there is, uh, you know. No, if so I'm saying like let's say five and six is missing. Okay. 780 is available. So does that 78 will go to the standby side? Yeah, I mean, it will go. I think it will go. Uh, I mean, if the two archives are missing from the primary, uh, they are not there in the primary, but the 78 is there, they will go to the standby side. If, if you're, uh, you know, if the process is receiving, it will go. Okay. 
in what situations the data card uh, it will pick the standby side it will pick up directly archive logs or uh, it will pick up the change from the uh, that your read log buffer from where it is going to take that i want to make the changes i want to see the changes right so i have a standby side so standby will be in sync with the primary by taking the data from the archive logs or from the read log buffer or on the read logs from where it is going to take uh, from the read log i mean uh, they have threads right and uh, it, it, uh, all the changes which are happening on the primary they are happening in case of bracket happens in thread so uh the threads will keep on writing in the redo log from there it will uh, pick up the you know uh, changes and the standby will pick up the changes okay so if the data is picking from the online redo logs then why the archive logs are moving from primary to standby yeah ultimately uh, it is like uh, the archives are uh, basically offline copy of redo logs only Mm -hmm. they are they, they, i mean archives are basically both are same if you check in the data both are same i am agree with that but my question is from where it is picking up? the data is picking up from the online reader logs or your archive logs are itself going to the standby side uh, i think in that case i have to revert my answer it should be archive logs you got my point right what i'm trying to say i got your point yeah i mean whether it's picking up the uh, you know logs from the archive log destination or it is picking up from the redo logs that's your question is right correct so i think it is from the archive log uh, you need to look into something called protection mode okay mm -hmm. okay uh, so we have protection mode sir there right maximum performance maximum availability that part will help you to understand this concept okay so overall like uh, i think you are good quite good <laughs> in terms of all um so it was a nice experience to have a discussion with you um i hope you also find it useful um it's just a mock interview and sure. that's the reason like we are posting it to the social media so that you know it will help to the people those who want to start their career into the um, the technology like oracle db and all so uh, like since you are very much expert with this technology and have a huge experience with this oracle db uh, around 10 plus years of experience with the technology do you have any message for the people who want to start their career into the dba the freshers or maybe some people who are already working and they want to switch back to the oracle db any message you want to give how to you know kick start the journey as a dba how how was your journey and all Uh, sure ankush i mean there is a lot uh, which is going on right now in the market so don't you know the first message is don't worry about like you don't have to know everything i mean that that's first thing i mean if you you start with the basics you then gradually uh, sometimes you get a chance to work on something sometimes you don't get a chance so whatever you are you know getting a chance on be expert with that that's one thing you know if you are learning only single instance that is also fine you know even you can become a rack expert with single instance knowledge also that's what i have seen so whatever you are getting chance to work on just keep on exploring the you know next next aspects of it like how how you can get better into that and that's one thing and uh, you know just follow a uh, lot of people around there who are experts like i mean ankush is there a lot of other people are there who are really creating videos social content social media content to uh, create awareness about the technologies what's going on in the market so yeah i mean it's more about like how much effort you are putting in and also uh, learn from the available resources i mean i mean there will not be any one person who can teach you everything Correct. sometimes you have to you know you have to uh, learn something from your own something from the others so and keep uh, you know keep building on network like just network with other, pe other people who are knowledgeable than you and seek their help that will really help I mean, that initially helped me during my days when i was you know started as dba i used to also make mistakes but i used to learn from them i used to see guidance from the seniors to learn and grow so that's how it works that is very important seeking a knowledge from the others that's very a key idea to you know get expertise into that technology and i see a lot of people are missing in that um, one more thing like you know um, how to like start the career into the db like that's a very famous question people are asking me do you have do you want to add some heads up on it like how you started how you got the opportunity how you practice yourself and all 
Uh, sure. I mean, there are some luck factor also. I got the opportunity as my, that was my luck. I was never, I, I never wanted to become a DBA, but the technology which was given to me to work on was DBA and gradually I developed interest into it, but that's not the case for everyone. If anyone wants to get into this uh, uh, in the field of DBA. Uh, so, I mean, any experience can help you. Like, suppose, uh, I think Ankuj has shared in the past few videos, like, if you have experience in any other technology and you want to get into the DBA, you can always, you know, learn that technology and you can always show that the past experience was into the DBA. So, right. uh, don't have that fear that, you know, I have uh, experience in C++, I cannot uh, become a DBA. So I have seen mechanical engineers working with me who have uh, like 10 or 20 years of experience in mechanical engineering, and then they are working as a DB and they are, they were my client. I mean, I, I, I mean, they were my customers, so they were mm -hmm. having a vast experience on that. So, uh, I mean, you can do it. I mean, anything is possible and DBA is not a very tough thing. You know, it's not yeah. like you have to write code and everything. You should be very proficient. It's just, you have to understand the environment, manage an environment. So uh yeah anybody can do it so don't worry about your experience that you have just keep on learning the technology and then you know replace it with uh, what you learned uh, your yeah. past experience with what, what you have learned so yeah nice nice uh it was a very nice message uh, manish so thank you so much for connecting with the learnable technologies and uh, as i said like we will definitely try to help to the dba community we'll try to add more and more videos not only just dba the advanced part of Oracle DB, like the RAG, Golden Gate, the cloud, and a lot of other things, including big data, also we have introduced. So thanks for giving your valuable input here and giving your time also. Uh, it's it was a nice time to have you with you here. Thank you. Thank you, Ankush. Thanks for bye -bye. Time. Thanks. Thank you.